Welcome to another episode of Airquaint Whiskey Studies and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this Real Spirits Distilling Company Texas Hill Country Signature Whiskey. This is pot stilled in small batches. It is uh, twice distilled and non chill folded and bottled at 45% alcohol by volume. Now most of the vid videos I've been doing during the Texas Whiskey Marathon have been my visit to distilleries and bottles that I brought back. Although there are also a couple that I bought at uh, local shops. I went to a Real Spirits Distilling, did an absolutely fantastic tour there, had a great time. However, something happened, something went wrong. The reason why this video is dedicated to Matt of the Whiskey Crusaders is uh, Matt did me a solid. Um, I've been to Scotland twice, brought back a lot of bottles, most of my bottles were just wrapped in my laundry and everything made it home fine. I brought back, oh, from probably about, com, trips combined, at least 40 bottles from Scotland. Never had any problems. Well, it turns out TSA, which does not inspect your bags coming out of the country, only within the country, um, or if you're going out, out of the country, the TSA has this funny little rule that you can't have more than five liters in a singular bag. I had about a dozen bottles from Texas in my bag. And so while I was going through the security checkout line, about to go through the screening, suddenly I got a message to go see someone in TSA. Now, time was running short. I only had a little bit of leeway time to get to my plane, so didn't want to screw around too much. Some people at TSA, they said I would have to leave about half of the bottles that I had with me there in Texas. I was not going to do it. I was going to figure something out. Now, never get into an argument with TSA or any federal official. They don't joke around, right? And they have the authority and the law on their side. The first thing they did was they grabbed a binder, pulled it out, went to the section that had the regulations regarding this topic, okay? I know all about rules and regulations and policies and procedures and stuff like that. If they've got a book you can pull out, don't try to argue logic or consistency. Just be super, super polite. Be very, very understanding that they're just doing the job. Now, they were then very helpful to me to find a solution, which was the airline I was with had bags for sale that you could spend 30 bucks for. So now I'm taking, so you, I, I could have more than five liters in my bag, in multiple bags, but not in one bag. Now, anything under 24% alcohol by volume, such as wine, they don't care. It's just over 24% because they consider it to be a fire hazard. So I took some of my laundry and sort of put it in different bags with, with the bottles. Before it was nicely, tightly wrapped in one bag. Now some of the things were sort of loosely wrapped in multiple bags. And the result was when I landed back here in California, sure enough, one of the bottles had broke. And one of the bags I had bought to bring some of it home, you could smell the whiskey, which then creates a fire hazard. So by them enforcing this regulation actually created a fire hazard rather than preventing one. Now, you gotta keep it in mind, it's not about logic or consistency or what makes sense or what is actually safe or not. It has to do with what it says in that book, it says in that binder. So I didn't argue. So, the result was the bottle that I had actually purchased at the distillery and would be reviewing, I didn't have. So I wasn't going to be able to do a, a video for my visit to the distillery. However, Matt was able to acquire this bottle for me. It's not the exact same bottle, but still it's from the distillery and I really, really like this. Um, and so I'll be sharing with you this bottle and which you can pick up at whiskey shops or wine shops, at least throughout Texas. Outside of Texas, I'm not so sure. Alrighty. So let's get into that. But before I do, uh, here uh, is uh, my photos and video of my tour around the brewery and distillery. <laughs>
Ghost Spirits Distilling Company, Texas Hill Country Signature Whiskey. The mash bill on the signature whiskey is made up of 100% malted barley made from two of Real Ale Brewing Company's beer styles. The Devil's Backbone Belgium Style Triple and the Real Heavy Scotch Ale. The brewers make the beer they normally would but without the hops. Both of these beers are brewed, fermented and aged separately. At the end of the maturation period, they are blended to create one beer that will become the signature whiskey. The beer is then double distilled to create the spirit, which is then aged in new charred white oak barrels, which contribute a large proportion of final flavor. It is bottled, unchill filtered, at 46% alcohol by volume. So the notes uh, that you saw there um, for this whiskey were not from the website, but rather I contacted the distiller and he gave me the notes via an email, so which I was really, really, really glad. I'm hoping they will be able to maybe update uh, their website and provide better notes as I did in this video. However, a lot of distilleries are going through changes, uh, changing uh, names, um, changing personnel. For example, um, Milam Green Distillery, which is actually just on the opposite side of the road from uh, Real Spirits, it used to be Ben Milam, and now they're Milam and Green, right? Change in, in terms of the CEO uh, and the team creating the whiskeys. Um, another distillery also changed its name to Bent Distillery, one of the whiskeys I already reviewed. Well, same right here. The, the, the ones who were doing the mash before, doing the distilling before, uh, at Real Spirits has changed. And so you're going to see actually uh, probably a bottle labeled single malt. So this is, in a sense... A single malt because it's, it's a malt from one distiller however the way they're doing things is a little bit different so in the future you're gonna see new bottlings come out labeled single malt and I'm really looking forward to uh, trying those because if this one is this good and they're, now they're even making more improvements really 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 looking forward to it now most of what you saw in that video is the brewery the brewery makes up 90% of probably or more of their production the distilling part is very 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 small so it's primarily a brewery but as you saw there in the notes the base for the spirit is two of their beers without the hops if you saw my video on Andalusia and my interview with Ty Phelps uh, Ty Phelps began at Real Spirits and then started his own a a with Andalusia, so he has a brewing background. And there's just some similarities, even though it's two different people working on it, you can kind of see the skill set and style of this whiskey having sort of a kinship with sort of the style of Andalusia. So on the nose, there is a sort of orange peel character that you might get up in a beer. There's definitely a presence of a maltiness. There's a little bit of a light brown sugar note, some honey, lighter caramels, definitely vanilla, toasted oak, some spice. At first, when I before I got the notes uh, from the distillery via an email, I thought there might be a little bit of rye in it, but it's not. The spice notes that are on this are coming from the oak. It has some little bit of, I'd say more citrus. In some ways, it can just a little bit reminds me of a scotch. And I was thinking about what scotch does it remind me of? It reminds me just a little bit, if I was gonna draw a parallel, something similar to like a Kragenmore 12. I'm not saying it tastes like a Kragenmore or exactly, it's just, I can see some parallels there. Going blind or being tasted blind, you might think this is a scotch. All right, on the palate. Mm. I'm not a beer drinker. I can see the little slight, it's kind of like that beer tang, that citrus tang you can kind of get in some beers. And I actually really like it. I get a little graham cracker, a little vanilla, some spice, ginger, like a ginger cookie, vanilla, lighter caramels, some vanilla, some say baked honey notes, or I might think of like a, um, 
Honey Nut Cheerios, that kind of a character to it. Really, really, really like this. I like it on ice as well as neat. Pretty much what you get in the front, you get in the middle, and you get in the finish. It has a nice long finish, but there isn't like any major uh, development or changes from beginning to end. It's sort of the same note all the way through it. However, what is there, I really, really, really like. I'm gonna give this a solid 90 points, solid 90 points. If it had more development going from the front to the mid to the finish, I'd go higher. I'm almost tempted to take it back down to an 89, but I'm gonna stay at a solid uh, 90. This is an excellent whiskey. However, I have a feeling this is probably going to disappear and what you're gonna start seeing is a whole new representation of the distillery that will be even better than what they have here. In fact, I the bottle that I, I, I lost because I broke, um, if you saw in the video the uh, board that was up the, at, from the tasting, from inside the tasting room, uh, it was like a, a bottle number 71 or cash number 71. I've heard a lot of great things about that one and I, and I tasted it actually at the distillery and I had a cocktail, which you saw there in, in the video. Really, really, really nice. All right, so fantastic distillery, fantastic tour. Really, really liked it. A lot of veterans working there. In fact, the, the gentleman that I toured with is a, was a, a former Marine like myself, Semper Fi. Really, really, really like it. And if you're a beer fan, you're gonna check out the beers. Now, something to keep in mind about Texas, they still have some funny laws. If you go there on a Sunday, you can't buy a whiskey. You can taste the whiskeys, you can buy a cocktail, right? But you can't buy the actual bottle of whiskey, which is, you know, is a silly. But so, if you're in the neighborhood, you're on the weekend, it's still worth, even if you can't buy a bottle of Italy, drop in on a Sunday and do a tasting and try the cocktail. The cocktail I had there was absolutely fantastic. Really, really, really nice. All right, that's it for this review. And thus far, this is the, it brings up the end of uh, my Texas Whiskey Marathon. I'm wrapping up a little bit sooner. I was gonna stretch it out for another week, but I've covered all the distilleries that I visited. And I'm gonna be jumping into uh, an Isla Whiskey Marathon for the next couple months. Really, really looking forward to uh, uh, getting into that. Um, gonna be some awesome whiskeys. All right, until next time. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. You wanna be notified when I go live or when I have a new video. You're gonna wanna hit the bell and uh, share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social network channels. Until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.